Hey everyone, my name is Holly Wade and I'm with my friend Gary Martinez. And uh, today we're gonna go from, we're going to talk about how to go from crazy to calming down. So Gary, I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit. All right, so my name is Gary Martinez and I am a personal trainer right now. I'm building myself a home-based business and I'm also a autism advocate and book author. So been staying pretty busy during these times, so I'm happy to share some good information today. So thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Actually, it was Gary's idea. <laughs> hey, we can't do this. What do you think of this idea? So I'm like, all right, let's try it. Um, mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Holly Wade, and I um, have been in the health and wellness industry for 27 years now. And I like to tell people I started in kindergarten, which... I know people don't really believe that, but it's okay. It makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I started, I did start very young in this field. And um, the thing that has pointed me in a particular direction is that I live with Crohn's disease. And it has informed me in so many ways about health from physical to emotional to spiritual to my mindset to how everything interacts. And um, really it's been a study of myself and getting to know and trust myself. And the thing that I can say is that during this pandemic, when we've all been home or um, just life changed a bit is that I've really been able to observe how well I can self-regulate and the tools that I do have in my tool belt because I've been using them. <laughs> so all that being said, uh, we have a couple people, Miss Bridget and Miss Cynthia, thanks for joining. Um, Thank yeah, thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, all that being said, let's just ask who's feeling stressed. And we were talking with Bridget a little bit uh, ahead of the game about, you know, how life is kind of, um, thrown curveballs maybe is a good way and it's still unpredictable and maybe that's a part of the the feeling that chaos because you can't really start to plan life out yet we still don't have that compass of how things are going to map out we still don't have this compass of well when can we start to normalize whatever that's going to mean when can we get back outside when can we participate in sports when we can when can we participate in those things that we love doing and the unknown is often the one of the components of stress that's it really boils down to fear gary feel free to chime in anytime you have something to add i just unmuted myself okay <laughs> yeah oh yay janet's on too thanks for joining janet good to see you Oh, she can't hear me yet. <laughs> Yay, we're getting a few more. Thanks for hopping on, Janet. Um, Sorry I'm so late. Oh, no worries. You're, you, we just got through our introduction, so no problem at all. We're just going to start diving into some techniques. Rather than talking about stress and chaos, because we all feel it, we don't really need to tell you what that feels like um, or what's causing it, because we're all living it right now. So what we'd like to do is spend some time on some tools and techniques that you can start putting into action right away. So a couple of things that I have learned and personally use is one is a mental disrupt. And what I mean by that is as soon as you start to get a negative thought or start to feel your emotions start to go into um, starting to spiral down. Has anyone felt that in the emotional roller coaster of what's going on right now? Oh, yes. Yeah. As soon as you feel that, what I want you to figure out is what is your action that will disrupt the thought and start to turn you into a more positive, excited, um, upbeat, or a, whatever feeling it is that you want to recreate. Um, because that disrupt is the way we train ourselves. 
it's like how we train animals or how we train um, a child, you know, with repetition, then they do that thing. Well, what we're doing is we're catching our, our mindset. We're catching that thought. So that disrupt, um, for me, it's dancing. I'll turn on some music and wiggle it out and then I'm good. <laughs> but it can be something like, yes, or a yes, or this is my niece's. Hers is a yes, like this. Um, but it can be whatever it is that feels natural for you. I have a friend who did, does like her, her fist pump like this. <laughs> yes. Because when we change it in our body, in our physical body, it changes it in our brain. So here's just a quick little practice. So close your eyes for a moment. Go ahead and sit up nice and tall and, and both feet flat on the floor for a second. Sorry about these notifications. So what I'd like you to do is now just start think, think about something that makes you sad. And notice how your body changes. Notice how your body positioning starts to change. Now think about being anxious or nervous about something. And notice how your body changes a little bit. Now think about being depressed. And same thing, just notice your body's positioning. So let's flip it and let's do some more positive things. Think about being full of happiness. Think about something that just puts a big old smile on your face and notice how your body changes. Now think about when you feel really excited about something, whatever, I don't know what that is, but you know what that is. And notice what changes in you. Notice where you start to feel some things changing and shifting in your body. And notice how your body position changes. Yep. Now just notice how you feel when you're full of joy. And notice what naturally happens. Maybe your hands changed position. Maybe your chest opened up a little bit. Now go ahead and open your eyes. Now, now you, can, you can unmute yourself. If you notice on the lower left, there's a little microphone sign. Go ahead and just unmute yourself. What did you observe in how your body's changed? I felt uh, like a release of tension from my, uh, the top of my upper shoulders going down towards the middle of my back. And I felt like my, my hands that are normally, my fingers that are normally very tight from, of course, using devices so much, they kind of tingled and they loosened up. And then uh, because of the positive uh, messages that you want us to, to imagine, I felt like tension kind of escaped my head. So nice. Some good things. Perfect. Anyone else? What did you notice? I, I will say that when, I, when we were talking about sad, depressed, um, anxious, it was the, the shoulders felt heavier. It was kind of like the curling in on myself and then opening up, it's the, you know, the shoulders did go back. You straightened up a little bit, you know, and I was doing a little bit of a dance, the dun 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. Janet's my sister at heart for the dancing stuff. <laughs> Not a very good tell. dancer, but I'll do it. <laughs> hey, same here. I'm, I have to get creative. Yep. So, so um, that's how the mind-body connection works. So our brain will drive that thought, but it takes that sensation. And did you just kind of notice that you started heavy was a word that mm -hmm. was tight was a word that was described, um, achiness or, or um, muscle tension. And then when we shifted that, when we shifted it here, into those other feelings you know what they feel like but you can change it that fast so we're doing it with that disrupt because we start to train the brain to go as soon as i do this <laughs> boom i'm on a different course and the more you repeat that the more that will shift for you so um one of my things is i've given myself a rule that i can kick and stomp and scream and have my little temper tantrum but i only get 15 minutes max mm -hmm. 
And then I got to pick it up and move on because it is not worth my day. It is not worth a whole day of feeling the. <laughs> hey, Holly, I have a, can I, can I throw in a little Please. tool method that I just learned recently? As far as like, you know, if you have like, you know, negative thoughts in your head, in your mind, you know, we get so, we get them by the thousands every day. That's just how it is that a nice little tool, a tweak that I just learned is when you're feeling, when you're feeling those, you know, come in your mind and your head and you want to get them out of your system, another tool that you can do is you can, you can write down what those are on paper yeah. and then you can ask yourself, is that true? And then that's like another way that we can kind of like rescue our mind by getting those, getting those out of our mind in our head. Yeah. It's, um, one thing that I've come to understand is I used to think, oh, I'm getting a negative thought and that I was supposed to just push it away and be happy and cheerful and, you know, kind of this, like you're supposed to be positive all the time. But the reality is, is our brain, as you said, is going to grab at those negative thoughts because it's our survival mechanism. And we're here because it's telling us danger, 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 danger. But now we, we can grow more wisdom with more experience and go, well, is it really? Is it really? Huh. Thanks, brain. I'm moving on, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and so anyway, but any of those disrupt patterns will start to shift your day. So you can choose whatever that is for you. Some people do a Superman stance or like a Superwoman power pose. This is universal. Like when people cross a finish line, this is the universal <clears throat> pose or shape. Um, so anything that just comes natural to you, as soon as you get that negative thought, disrupt it mm -hmm. and get on. Get on with your positive things or change what you're doing. Um, the second tool that I like to use is breath work. So I'm going to give you three and then Gary's going to dive in. Um, but the reason I like breath work um, is I think it's more sustainable for people than meditation. So how many of you have tried to meditate and you think, ooh, I'm not very good? Mm -hmm. And why did you think you weren't very good? Oh, I just didn't feel like I knew what I was doing, like not doing it correctly or something like that. Right, right. Um, Bridget, what about um, you? Oddly, it's it's like I focus so much on what I'm supposed to be doing when I'm doing it, like, <laughs> relax. So it's yeah, it doesn't help me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's true, <clears throat> and you know, it's like meditation's supposed to feel so good, but why do I feel so bad doing it? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I went through about a two year period where I wanted to learn to meditate. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I had all these books and they really didn't tell me how. They gave me kind of some spiritual story lines and some different things, but I was like, well, this isn't helping me. So what I did was I'd set my alarm for a minute and just sit or lie down and make myself stay there. And then once I could do it for a minute, I upped it to two. And then once I could do it for two, I upped it to three. Once I could do it easily for three, I upped it to five. And so it was just incremental for me. But my purpose became that I wanted to filter out the noise in my head versus the still small voice inside of me. You know, I wanted to know what the voice of God sounded like. And the only way I knew I was going to be able to do that was to shut up and really practice listening. And sometimes I would get it. Sometimes I would get an answer. Sometimes I didn't. Still that way. Um, but I did learn to relax. Now, in fast forward, however many years later, I'm not a consistent meditator. I will do it now and then, but I'm a consistent breath work person because I can do it in my car when I'm driving. <laughs> or I can do it at work in a meeting, or I can do it um, in a lot of different places. So 
we want to breathe from the belly. Most people breathe from their shoulders. So what I'd like you to do is place one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart, and then close your eyes. And we get the trains too, all kinds of fun noises. Now just start to notice your breath. And as you inhale, see if you can feel the hand on your belly rise first, then the hand at your heart, and then your shoulders will rise also, but we want that deep, full breath and your ribs are gonna expand out. And then when you can't let in any more air, just soften and exhale naturally. It'll naturally let go and your hands will sink back into your body. Now what I'd like you to observe is if you're clenching your jaw. So if you are, separate your back teeth. Soften the muscles of your face. And now as that air travels in, just see if you can make it hit the back of your throat. So we're gonna add one more step. Now as you inhale, inhale for four counts. So four, three, two, one, hold it. Three, two, one, exhale. Three, two, one, and hold. Three, two, this is called a box breath. So inhale for four counts. Two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, let go, three, two, one, and hold, three, two, one. We'll do three more of these. Inhale, three, two, one, and hold, three, two, one, Exhale, three, two, one, and hold. Three, two, two more. In. Hold it at the top. Let it all go. And hold. One more time. Hold it at the top. Let it go. And hold it at the bottom. And then just come back to a normal breath for you, just a normal pace. Beautiful, blink your eyes open when you're ready. Uh, how are we feeling? Oh, <laughs> relaxed. Yeah, super simple to do, huh? Mm-hmm. And that was about two or three minutes of time. So really doable. Um, and again, very quick way to change. Now, the reason I did a box breath, that in for four, hold for four, exhale four, hold for four, is because it evens out our central nervous system. So we're usually either in fight or flight or rest and digest. And we fluctuate between the two throughout the day. So when you wake up in the morning, your body should naturally be in fight or flight, which means we're gonna have a little more energy, a little more focus, easing into the day, getting ready to go. After you eat, that's when we wanna do creative things and things that don't require a lot of energy because our energy is going into digestion. So we want to be at rest, um, but life does this. And so if we can do that box breath, 
it helps to just even out our central nervous system. Any questions about that technique? Not a question, but a, uh, a comment that in the beginning, it was, uh, it was hard to focus on, you know, myself. <laughs> but then as we got further into it, you know, it's, it, my body started to adjust. Interesting. So, yeah. Did anyone else experience that? They're like, oh, heck no. I was right there. <laughs> it's just <All> right. <laughs> We're all different. And sometimes that's the way it is. Because sometimes our brain is going, wait, wait, I don't want to do this. Um, but the more we just train our brain, this is what we're doing, then the body will start to follow suit. So really good stuff. Um, at the end, we'll do a guided meditation and I'll close with that, but I'll just tell you one more technique or one more tool that I use. It's not really a technique, but I am a fan of my essential oils. And that scent also helps the brain. We're just getting in more oxygen flow. Um, there is research behind different scents and how that helps the brain move into a calming state. My favorites tend to be cedar wood. That's what I use at the end of yoga and groove. Bridget knows about that one. Um, Lavender is always a good one. I love that one for a detox bath. Um, and I tend to like the really grounding scents. Um, so like the earthy pines and um, I don't know. I've got one called Faith that I really like. And I kind of like to, I kind of like those more so than the flowery scents. But again, everybody's different and you know what works for you and what resonates for you. And if you um, have any questions or need any suggestions on that, I'm happy to answer those through uh, a little bit later. Gary, let's turn it over to you. <laughs> I'm all relaxed now. I'm ready to go to sleep, but uh, I better get to it. <laughs> so I brought some notes today for what I wanted to uh, talk about. And uh, I just got someone who's training. It's like the perfect time right now because it's all about um, how to build your family brand right now during this crisis and just how to come out of this a lot more happier, a lot more healthier. And uh, so I was like, this is exactly what I need. This is what a lot of people need to hear right now. So it's, uh, it's from uh, a guy named Noah, uh, Noah Elias. There you go. I got his last name right. So what he said was... Um, you know, whoever leads the home sets the tone. Mm. And then he had a little saying afterwards where he believes, in his opinion, that uh, you have no business trying to change the world if you can't manage the business underneath your roof. So that was something that was like his opinion. And it kind of stuck with me that like, you know, it all starts at the home first before we can step outside into the world and you know, do great things. So after that quote, he has like three, he had like three steps that he was talking about. And the first one was, is that your spouse or partner is your number one client. And the last thing that you ever want to hear is that your, your, your spouse is, you know, talking to someone else in a conversation and they're saying like, Hey, you know what, whether it's he or she, um, I don't think I'm, I'm their number one client. And he was like, that's something I would never want to hear that he said about his wife. So he really, really wanted to focus on that. You know, you, your spouse is your number one client. And if, if you don't have that, you know, in check, if you guys aren't successful with that, then you're not going to be able to manage the relationships with your kids either. So that was the point that he made with that. And then what he said to follow up with that is, um, here's how you make that better. You can either, either way you're going to spend money. So you're either going to invest in uh, marriage counseling or you're going to invest in date nights. And he was like, cause he's like a colorful personality guy. And he was like, date nights. We, you know, he's like, we did date nights. So, you know, we're at home now. So we got to get more creative, right? We can't, we can't go to a, uh, a restaurant that we really like for a date night. So you got to set the tone at home. 
And the way he said he does that is you get creative and you just have like a picnic. You grab your food, you grab your wine, you grab whatever for your date night picnic and you have it outside. And then what you tell the kids is you tell the kids, hey kids, go watch a movie. So they go watch a movie, you create that date night outside and you take all your stuff and you, uh, you know, you have a, a great date night and you really improve your relationship right there. And he said, you know, that's just, it's just a great relationship investment. So that is the, uh, the first one and a half for that. And to kind of um, just throw this in there also, as he also said in the middle of this part one is that, you know, God is always, God is a CEO. So he also said that part right there. Um, the second uh, step that he had was uh, because two are better than one. So he's talking about, of course, yourself and your spouse. Two are better than one because it makes the work the workload light. And as far as like your work life, you want to fit your work life around your life. So work isn't in charge. It's the other way around is what he said in that one. So. Hope this is helpful so far. <laughs> so that's two right there. Um, and then the third tip that he had, uh, well, also, I'm sorry, to uh, finish that number two one, like when you're on your picnic, you're having your little date night, those are the time to ask important questions to build up that relationship. And some of the questions that he asks is, you know, how are you feeling? And then, um, you know, what's on your radar lately? And then another question is, how can I help you get that? So some nice questions in your date night to, you know, just to build that relationship. Ladies, I'm wishing that more guys were on this call right now. <laughs> else? So I hear this stuff. It's like women gravitate toward personal development, but we need men too. Right. And what I like about what he said is that two are better than one. And, and something that I heard earlier today was, and it's all circling around family. And it's about, you know, having that commitment. If, if two people commit to each other and they truly love each other, then you're going to seek it all the way through and you're, gonna, and you're going to do things like date night. You're going to do what it takes, you know, to, to have that relationship that you want for the rest of your time period. So I just feel like th these are some powerful tools. You know, they're, they're kind of simple in the, in the steps, how I read them. But I mean, how powerful is that when you invest them for real? And then we got step number three. <laughs> so this one's about the kids. So he basically said, have you ever had a best kids day ever? And, and like, even the question was to yourself, have you ever had a best kids day when you were growing up with your parents? Now, the way you want to do it with your kids, the way he, he does it and suggests it is that the whole day with the exception of movies and devices, the kids are in charge. So they, they get to map out the whole day. So it's like, hey, do you want to go eat gallons and buckets of ice cream? Or do you want to go to somewhere that they like? Maybe it's the zoo. The whole day is, is their day. It's all about them. And uh, what else did he say about that? And he said, you know, basically this can single-handedly change the relationship with our kids. And you'll look back at this time during this crisis right now and, and talk about all the great memories that you had during this time. And that you don't want to be like a cop type parent, cop type of a parent. You know, we're always like judging them, but you want to be your kid's greatest advocate. And you just want to enjoy the time right now and make these, these memories and, and have those date nights, like you just said, <laughs> for the ladies for, you know, wishing the, the husbands and, you know, it goes both ways. But those are his three uh, steps. And then he finished with, uh, he has his own system. And he, he encourages people to create their own system. So he has the three F-bombs. <laughs> and he's like, and he made it funny because, you know, like I said, he's a funny, you know, got that personality. Now, it's not the F-bomb that we're talking about, but it's some funny good ones. So I'm going to tell you what they are. So the three F-bombs are your faith, right? So your faith in God. Um, the second one is fun. And he was talking about whatever fun is for you. Like you're, I don't know, you're inside the house and you're having a uh, uh, pillow fight or you're, maybe you're outside the house and you're throwing water balloons at yourself. He's like, when's the last time you said, man, this is fun? 
and you're saying it together as a family. Yeah. So fun was number two. And well, actually there's four, sorry. And then the, la and the third one I should say is fitness. So that could be anything. That can be going for a family walk. That could be riding bikes together. That could be playing the game outside. And then what I was thinking of is like, what if we have older kids that are like in middle school or high school? And what if they, they're missing their sport right now that they play? What if they, what if they play basketball? Or one kid does a, a sport outside of school, like, you know, jujitsu or something like that having that, that fitness day kind of gives them that piece that they're missing. So fitness is, you know, very important to do. And you just have to block out that time during the day. Like what time are we doing? Is it like 8.30 in the morning? Is it, is it like 5 p.m. in the evening? You know, you just got to block out time for all these things. Which makes and then the last one for the kids that are, for all the kids at home. Exactly. They have something to look forward to. They get to get that energy out, you know, and then have fun and all that stuff. The last part that he said is like the funniest one. And he was like, uh, it really sticks with people when he teaches this little series is uh, fart. <laughs> so he's like, fart. He's like, laugh because, you know, he has a kid with special needs with autism and he can't get his kid to, you know, smile because, you know, of, of his situation. So when he does, so when he, you know, farts, fart or say the word fart, it's the only way to like make him smile, like when they're taking a picture or something. So he just really emphasized to just have a lot of fun and then create your own system. You might have your whatever, you might have a different uh, list, you know, so create that list and implement it daily and see how all these steps, you know, can help you right now during this crisis and just make it great memories and you know, enjoy this time and just put more smiles on your faces on a daily basis. Smiles change everything. Um, as you were talking about family time, I was thinking about my youngest brother and his family. And they've uh, started doing these family film parodies. And it was one of those things that just kind of happened, but it was, it's Tiger King. And the whole yeah. family is involved. And I mean, these are <laughs> littles. So Veda is nine and Presley's seven and Hattie's four. So they're pretty little, but they're big enough to help. And it's become this family affair. And I just, I watch these videos and think, oh my gosh, what memories are they building right now in this time? And, you know, building that family bond. And I'm sure they're going nuts. But it's such a great outlet yeah. um, for them right now, too. So, and it makes, and the rest of us are enjoying it. <laughs> That's right. That's I'm looking right. forward to it, too, because it makes us all laugh. Exactly. Um, I had one more piece, if I can put that in there. So, like I said, Noah has, you know, he has a kid with special needs, right? His son. And he has to do the little fart around stuff to make him smile and laugh. So, for those who don't know me, and Holly knows me, but for those out there who don't, I have a daughter 14 years old named Monica, and she has special needs, so she's also on the autism spectrum. So I wanted to uh, throw out a few things that can help our kids who have special needs, autism, what can help them out right now at home if the environment is a little overwhelming and they need, and they need some items to help them with. So what I, what I have is, uh, you know, you can build a sensory retreat or a pillow cave. So, you know, if they need to get away from everything and have a nice, quiet, cozy place, you can, uh, as a family, you can build a sensory retreat and let them pick what they want to do. You know, is it like bed sheets? Is it like stacking up couch pillows? Or for the pillow cave, of course, it's all kinds of different pillows. It's really soft. It's something that they like. It's a good place to retreat when they need that, that quiet space. And then the next one I have is uh, Bubble Mountain. So Bubble Mountain is a, is a pretty fun one because a lot of kids on the spectrum, they really need a lot of oral support. Mm -hmm. So a Bubble Mountain is like, I know we all got like a big popcorn bowl sitting around in the house somewhere. <laughs> so you get a popcorn bowl, like a big bowl like that. And then you put in like your dish soap and then you fill it up with water, right? And then what you want to do is you want to grab some of the, uh, the plastic aquarium tubes and then cut, you know, cut a certain length. And then, you know, the bowl is so big that everyone can hop in and do bubble mountain together if our kids like that. But if they don't, just let them, you know, do it solo, blow bubbles, because when, when they feel it's, it's a self-regulating 
uh, technique for a lot of our kids on the spectrum. You know, they get a lot of information with their jaw and their muscles, and it's kind of like a, it makes them calm down and feel good. And they're also at the same time getting some oxygen and some blood flow here where maybe they don't have, you know, they're maybe they're like lacking up there in like, um, you know, their state of the moment. So bubble mount in this one that I have. And, and then the next one is like a tactile box. So this is like dry texture. So again, maybe it can be a, a popcorn bowl. Maybe it's a cardboard box or like a storage, a small stain or whatever, where you can fill that up with whatever they want. Again, maybe it's rice. Maybe it's beans, maybe it's uh, the little macaroni shells and fill that up. And a lot of our kids, you know, we're all different. We like different types of things that calm us down. It's kind of like when you're at the playground, when you're putting your feet in the sand or at the beach, put your feet in the sand. In this case, you're putting it in beans or, or rice or whatever. And you put your hands in there, whatever feels good that you put in there is uh, that's another one. Uh, and then another one is uh, a trampoline. So if you have like a mini trampoline or something, a lot of our kids like to get a release of energy and plus the your whole body is getting exercise and it does a lot like there's like so many benefits I can be on here forever but trampoline is another good one and I think let's see do I have one more actually I do not so those are just some help or tips for uh, us parents at home who have a kid with special needs so wanted to throw that one in there and that's all I have so I think I'm gonna go blow bubbles when we're done with this <laughs> It's a fun thing to do. Who doesn't like blowing bubbles? <laughs> I want to see those bubbles. I want to see those bubbles overflow. <laughs> right? Right? Yep. Um, does anyone have any questions up to this point or any comments that you want to share? Ideas that you, you're doing? Anyone? Um, I will say I, I love the idea of the, the kids day where they're in charge, um, although it also sounds a little scary, but <laughs> <laughs> my kid, a couple of my kids are just in the next room and I'm surprised they didn't speak up and say, yeah, when do we get to do that? You know. <laughs> um, so far we've done things though, like the other night, um, I don't even know how it started, but they started using the remote to pause or rewind us in real life. And uh, they had a lot of fun with that. And it was just impromptu. Yeah, that's it was awesome. Fun. Yeah, so just being silly. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, and I, we did a, um, last night for the first time in, I don't know, maybe a month, we had pizza delivered. And it was a special delivery from somebody and I had set out a red tablecloth and I had set out the plates and set the table and put flowers on it because I bought flowers for myself this week and put candles out so it felt a little more restauranty. It wasn't it wasn't a date night, but it was a family night where we had dinner out in our kitchen. Yeah, awesome. Love that. Love that. Great idea. Miss Cynthia, do you have anything that you wanna bring into the conversation? Um, no. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Good. I'm sorry. I couldn't get my video going. I got home later than expected. So, um, and I didn't realize it. And so, um, no, I'm, I, I work in a manufacturing facility and we are, there's a lot of people that are stressed right now. So I'm just trying to find ways to get through it. Yep. We're all in that boat, sister. We're all in that boat of just trying, how do we get through it? It's um, gotta be stressful to be in manufacturing though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, and it's, I, I'm, I'm 60 years old. I have no kids at home. I don't have half the burdens that some of these other people have, mm -hmm. but to deal with other people's stress, it's sometimes it's easy to, you know, to deal with it. Other times I get very frustrated, right. you know? Right. Well, the way I think of it is um, when we're as stressed as, as a lot of people are right now, of course the emotion comes out. You just don't know when it's going right. to come out and whether that's at work, whether that's at home, whether that's in whatever capacity, uh, it has to go somewhere because we can't bottle it up. Um, so... It, it's just how we all are. Um, 
Gary, you hit on a really, really big word, and that's the fun word. Because I think mm -hmm. even as adults, and I'm so glad you brought this in, because as adults, we forget to play. That's true. Yep. And to let ourselves laugh and to let ourselves have fun. And um, we take life really seriously because we do have serious things that we have to deal with. But so do kids. You know, and what do we tell them to do? Have fun. But we forget to tell ourselves that. To go have fun. Mm -hmm. So that's a um, good point. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm gonna give you some homework when we're done with this. <laughs> And it's going to be to, to do something <laughs> fun, whether it is a dance party, whether it is um, watching a comedy, whether it is, but something that's going to make you laugh and mm -hmm. giggle and be a little silly and ridiculous. And just, just if you need to pull out coloring books and color, because that's what you love to do as a kid, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But to kind of get yourself in that, that goofy yep. state. Um, no matter how ridiculous it feels. One of the, those of you who don't know, I'm a master trainer for Body Groove. So if you've seen the, um, seen Misty Tripoli, the woman with the really funky dreadlock <laughs> on social media, that's her. And I've known her since 07 anyway, if not 06, somewhere around there. So I've known her for a long time and I've worked with her for a really long time. Groove changed my life. And I'm taking a tangent. This wasn't the point of all this, but I'm getting to a point. Um, yeah. It's one of the things that helped me to loosen up. And because group truth number one is no one cares what you look like. And if they do, it's their problem. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's coming from the approach of body image. But if you're someone like me who is, you know, who was trying to be prim and proper, but on the inside, there's this real, like, little rebel and a real, like, I have a great sense of humor. I just would only let certain people see it. And I started to break that out and let that come out and just be more ridiculous and be more of myself, no matter what setting I was in. And, you know, it's not a big surprise that that would help my digestive issues. So it all goes hand in hand. But, um, mm -hmm. but give yourself permission to be silly and ridiculous and laugh and have some fun and whatever the case may be, whatever, like Gary said earlier, whatever that looks like for you. I don't know, but you do. Um, so that's your homework and we're all done. Gary, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, just to uh, create your own, your own little values right there, your own F-bombs, whatever you want to call them. You want to read Maybe you just start with one. <laughs> yeah, real quick it's faith oh yeah it's uh faith fun fitness fart <laughs> i can remember those. i can remember them probably got one that sticks out there <laughs> we're doing our homework right now <laughs> that's right we're giggling you can't laugh or you can't not laugh that's funny um, so I'm going to leave you de-stressed and we'll do a quick little meditation, just a quick little guided imagery to help you, you know, weave a little relaxed with a smile on your face. Um, and actually I'm going to do one that's not so serious since we're ending on a not so serious note. So it doesn't matter how you sit. If you want to sit a little slouched, doesn't matter. Um, just get your, let yourself get comfortable and close your eyes when you're ready. And in your mind's eye, just start to put a little smile somewhere in your body. Start to put a smile on your mouth, just a little soft one. Smile across your forehead. Smile across your heart. Smile in your hands. Smile across your belly. Smile on your legs. In your feet. 
And then just start to stamp all over your body, inside and out, with all these little smiley faces. Might be, they might be giggly, they might be, who knows. But just start to stamp those everywhere in your body and on your body. Remember your backside, not just your front. And just keep going until every cell in your body has been stamped with a smiley face. Keep going, keep going, keep going, and just keep layering and piling in those smiles because we can't ever have enough, can we? And when those smiles start to overflow out of your body and into the room around you, just sit in it, just sit in all those smiles. Now take the biggest breath in, and as you do, smile with it. Exhale, let it go. Do that again. One last time. And when you're ready, you can blink your eyes open. <laughs> How are we feeling? Pretty good. Happy. Good. A couple of things with that. It's impossible to hold tension when you have a gentle smile. And it's, impossi it's really impossible to hold tension when you sigh. When you do a it's, it's impossible to hold on to that tension in your body. So those are a couple of little tricks when you start to notice that you're clenching and getting tight, just sigh. Any of those activities that we tried, any of those things that we practiced, whatever really resonates with you, that's your go-to. Awesome. Well, hey, we are just a little bit below time, but thank you all for taking time today to join us. Gary, thanks, thanks for that information. That was fun. Hey, Thank that you. last one we just did. You know what? You know what happened? Um, when I when when I did the smile to my hands, must be something about my hands today. Uh, when I when we did smile to the hands, immediately uh, a release went to my butt, <laughs> my calves, and my feet. Because the whole those, body's connected. Well, those are the three tightest spots on my body right now. They're like you know, like stress or from other area, from other things. And it like gave like a little release, release, release. So that felt good. <laughs> awesome. Imagine if we'd give ourselves that much time and attention every single day. And it wasn't even that much. Right. But just imagine if we would give ourselves that time and attention every single day, what an impact that would have on those around us and how it would change how we treat the things we're doing and the people that we're around. I think I have my Facebook Live for tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. Good job, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. That's how they come. Now the, now the secret's out. That's how they come. Um, so thanks <laughs> for your time and for, for being here today. And if you have any questions for either one of us, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you want to know how to connect with Gary, I'm certainly happy to um, link you to him uh, because he has such a great resource for autistic kids. I've seen his work out there. So if you know anyone in that bent, he's really great there among other things. But that's, I know, one area that people really um, look for help. Um, and I'm the stress kid. I'm the stress girl. So <laughs> all those cool. other things, dance, all that stuff.
So if we can help you, please let us know. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Holly and Gary. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. very much. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you too. Thanks, Janet. Thanks, Bridget. Thank you, Gary. You're Thanks. Welcome. Yep. <laughs> Have a good rest of your day. You too. You too. Bye. Bye.